I'm gonna show you how you can easily get real lenses with crazy cool bokeh and lens effects in Blender. What I mean with real lens is that it's a lens made up of actual glass elements. The method I'm gonna show you is paid, but there is a free way to do this, which I'm gonna link in the description. The problem with it, however, is that it's a ton of work, especially if you want more than one lens, and it's already a ton of work for one lens. So since this video is called Easy Real Lenses, I'm gonna stick to the paid method, which are the Jack Chill and Jackie Morphic camera packs. The anamorphic pack includes a 1.33, 1.5 and 2x lens, while the regular camera pack includes an assortment of vintage lenses. Now, full disclosure, I was given these camera packs for free by the creator, as well as a commission if anyone buys these using my link. Speaking of, I also have a coupon code for you guys to sweeten the deal a bit. So you can save 15% off using code EDINBLENDER. By the way, if you want to dip your toes in without spending any money, the 105mm and the 28mm fisheye are currently free, so check them out while they still are. But now let's actually get started with showing you how to use the first, the regular lenses. The important thing, no matter which lens you have, is that you download the Blender 4.2 only version. Because these fix an issue where the lenses broke down if you move them too far away from the center point of the world. Then append the collection with the lens you want. I'll be using the 35mm Red Rocket. You can see this adds a bunch of objects to the scene. So to actually use the camera, you have to set this camera object as the main camera for the scene. And you'll see nothing. Because in order for this to work, you have to increase the total, transmission and transparency light bounce. How much you have to increase them depends on the scene, but I found 16 to be good in most cases. Note that you might have to increase the exposure a bit as well. Then move this camera mesh to frame up the shot and this focus empty to where you want to focus. Sometimes you have to move the focus empty slightly behind the object you want to focus on, but that's not too big of a deal. If you want to change the sensor size, you can go to the actual Blender camera object, which is acting as the sensor in this case, and tweak its orthographic scale to be whatever you desire. Of course, there's a limit because just like real lenses, they don't cover in infinite areas. The default is 36 millimeters, so full frame. Lastly, to change the f-stop, just scale the aperture, scale me object up or down. Also, if you have an object at the 000 coordinates, it will most likely mess up the image. So I recommend selecting all objects in the scene and moving them up by one meter. That way, nothing gets in the way of the optics. Now, to improve the usability of this setup, I would recommend to add a regular Blender camera in the same location and rotation as the Jectual camera, match their focal length and sensor size, and parent the Jectual camera to the Blender camera. Then to frame up the shot and work on your scene, you'll use the Blender camera, and to light and render, you'll use the Jectual camera. Speaking of lighting, if you want to hide lights from the camera, you'll have to disable their transmission visibility. The cool thing is that some, or all of the lenses, I'm not quite sure, are based off of actual lenses that exist in the real world, and they actually replicate them to a pretty high accuracy. Just look at this comparison that Jack, the creator of these lenses, sent me. Anyways, now we know how to use the regular lenses, so let's move on to the anamorphic ones. For them, you'll also want to make sure to download the Blender 4.2 only version, and if they are available, the with render layers version. Because through some black magic, Jack was able to make render layers work with these lenses. At the time of this video's release, this only works on the anamorphic 2x lens, but I was told that sometime in the future, the other lenses are going to get this ability as well. Now, for this tutorial, I'm only going to cover the sharp kit and single focus lenses, but if you need extra wide anamorphic lenses, do focus or have to get really close to objects, then I suggest you check out Jack's tutorial on the other anamorphic lenses. I'll put a link to it in the description. But anyway, append either the Jackymorphic 2x sharp, 1.5x sharp or the 1p33x single focus. The 1.33 currently doesn't seem to have a sharp kit, but it's planned and in the meantime it should still work the same way. Now almost everything is exactly like with the regular lenses. The only differences are the squeezing your image, the aspect ratio of your render, as well as how you change the camera settings. First, to vary the f-stop, select the blend the camera object of the lens and adjust the f-stop there. The sensor size can be changed in the sensor size setting of the camera as well. If you want even taller bokeh, you can also increase the ratio on top of everything else. Now, the aspect ratio. For the 1.33 anamorphic lens, it should be 16 to 9. For the 1.5, it should be 32 to 27. And lastly, for the 2x, it should be 4 by 3. To de-squeeze, go to the compositor, enable use nodes, and scale down the y-axis by these factors here, depending on which lens you're using. Note that the exact de-squeeze amount varies based on the focus distance of the lens. So if you want to figure out the exact de-squeeze amount needed, you can render out a sphere and adjust the scale until it's perfectly round. Then to view the de-squeezed image in real time in the viewport, just enable the viewport compositor for camera only. And that's the anamorphic lens. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please check out the Jackie Morphic and Jack Joe cameras. Thanks for watching.